Hello, hello. Linda White here with another installment of Shakuri's Time Capsule. Today I'm putting on my pearl choker, my little black sheath dress, and pointy-toed stiletto pumps as we look back at cocktail parties of the 1960s. For those of you too young to remember, just think of TV shows like Mad Men or The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which, by the way, I highly recommend for anyone who loves a vintage New York setting, colorful fashions of the late 50s and early 60s, and Jewish humor. Uh, but for my listeners with sensitive ears, eh, I will warn you that one particular character uses the F word quite a lot, but I think she's hilarious. Anyway, let's turn on the hi-fi and play a little bossa nova which was popular in the early 60s as we get ready for our cocktail party. Oh yeah, that's nice. By the way, that tune is called It's Not Over Till the Bossa Nova, and it's by Shane Ivers, who also does my intro-outro theme. You can find this and other musical masterpieces of his on silvermansound.com. Of course, we can't have a cocktail party without the requisite alcoholic libations and a fully stocked wet bar in our living room. The mixed drink started to gain popularity in the USA during the 1950s when the former World War II soldiers came back home with memories of the exotic tropical drinks made with rum. The gin martini was also a much requested drink back then. Other drinks of choice around that time included the Manhattan, the Cuba Libre, or rum and Coca-Cola, as made popular by the Andrews Sisters song of the same name, the Slow Gin Fizz, the Grasshopper, and many others. Now, with the soldiers coming back from war action in the Pacific Theater, Polynesian-inspired food and drink like the Mai Tai became a huge trend. Polynesian restaurants eventually started to open up everywhere. I believe they called this whole scene the tiki culture. Speaking of food, let's take a quick look over our vintage cocktail menu of scrumptious appetizers. In yet another nod to Pacific Island cuisine, a popular hors d'oeuvre back then was the sweet and sour meatball made with the glaze of grape jelly and chili sauce. Or how about some rumaki, which were water chestnuts and chicken livers wrapped in bacon, put on a toothpick, and coat it with the glaze of soy sauce and brown sugar. One appetizer that still makes an appearance now and again at family gatherings and potlucks is a classic pig in a blanket. That's a small cocktail sausage wrapped in biscuit dough and baked till it's a wonderful golden brown. And, of course, we have to have an array of finger sandwiches that should be both delicious as well as pleasing to the eye. I'm talking about checkerboards, pinwheels, cornucopias, etc. With watercress, chopped liver, or egg salad filling. Oh, and let's not forget the shrimp. Whether it's sitting on top of a canapé or grouped together in a shrimp cocktail, you can't have any kind of a party without the shrimp. My husband, who's originally from England, used to tell me about the pineapple and cheese hedgehogs they'd have for family gatherings and parties. Basically, what they would do is they would dice up pineapple and cheese, they put a cube of each on a toothpick, and then stick all the toothpicks into an orange. Once all the pineapple and cheese toothpicks were inserted, the orange did look like a hedgehog, or a porcupine, or, as far as I'm concerned, it actually looked like a space satellite. But they they were pretty cool to look at, and we've done a few ourselves over the years. Now, make sure to check out this podcast's Instagram feed where I'll have photos of a lot of these things I've mentioned. You'll find it at Chikuri's Time Capsule, all one word, on Instagram. I could get into desserts right now, but I just don't have the time because that would take an entire future podcast in and of itself. So we'll do that at another time. Before I go, I just want to quickly mention I have two books currently on Amazon, Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Bell of Camden County, written by me, Linda M. White, are both historic fiction novels set in the late 19th and early 20th century. You can actually read a sample portion of each on Amazon. 
Well, my guests are starting to arrive, so I guess this is where I must leave you now. From the bottom of my heart, I thank each and every one of you for listening. Peace and blessings to you all. Adios.